present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Asleep in the Deep, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guest Bill Pertwee and Larry Martin. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. It is June 1942, and only three nights after the RAF's first thousand-strong bomber raid on Cologne, Hitler's Luftwaffe has been quick to retaliate. Home Guard units are on duty every night, and the Warmington on Sea platoon is no exception. In their command post at the Novelty Rock Emporium, Captain Mannering and his men are in a state of constant alertness. Mike, take your thumb out of your mouth, boy. Do you know something, Wilson? What's that, sir? I'd give everything I possess to have a go at the enemy. I feel so helpless. Our lads are out there bowling Jerry for six. And here we are, stuck in the pavilion. Yes, I know what you mean, sir. Lay, Roy! Lay, Roy! Lay, Roy! Lay, Roy! Supposed to be Jones Lay, and Fraser Lay, coming off watch. Lay, Roy! Roy! Well! Halt! Number <laughs> two patrol reporting, sir. Miss Jones. All quiet, sir. What did you say, Jones? I said it's all... I said it's all quiet, sir. When I say all quiet, I'm not referring to the noise, if you understand, sir, because you don't often get quiet noise, do you, sir? (laughs) At least I can't remember having heard any. Then, of course, it might have been so quiet that I missed it. (laughs) Anyway, the all quiet I was referring to is official military procedure... In my meaning, quite clear to you, sir, or would you like me to elaborate? Heaven forbid. <laughs> what the old fool's trying to tell you, Captain Mannering, is that we didn't spot any Nazi parachutists. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Jones, you and Fraser are going to have a rest in the corner. Oh. Right, sir, right, sir. Thank you, sir. Number two patrol at the double. Go and have a rest in the corner. <laughs> left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. <laughs> No, sir, if you ask me, I think that's the best place for him. Well, you may well scoff, Wilson. But that man has spirit. You can see the light of battle in his eye. It's exhilarating. Oh, dear. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it's it's <laughs> awfully good, sir. I wouldn't mind seeing the light of battle in your eyes. Oh. That is, if you could keep them open long enough. Sorry. Oh. What's the matter with you? Didn't you get any sleep last night? Well, I... I didn't have time to get home, but I I managed to snatch a couple of hours at Mrs. Pike's. We've been going at it pretty hard lately, you know. (laughs) Really? Yeah, I mean, working at the bank all day, you see. Then out on duty most of the nights. Oh, I see. It does rather take it out of you. Look, Wilson, I'm just as tired as you are. But I don't go around with a dozy look on my face. As an officer, I have to set an example to my men. And you, as my sergeant, should do the same. Brighten up. I'll try, sir. And Clark, sir. Now, what is it, Frank? Would you like some of my sweets? Hmm? Oh, how lovely, yes. What are they? Hundreds and thousands. <laughs> there you are. Would you like some hundreds and thousands, Captain Mannering? Thank you, Pike. No. I'm trying to give them up. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have a very sweet tooth. No, but then you are awfully bright, sir, aren't you? You, you can't have everything. Look, it's, uh, it's 02.30. Time for you and Pike to go out on patrol. Come on, get ready. All right, very well. Come yeah, on, Uncle Arthur. I always get my sweet rations in hundreds and thousands. They weigh light, and you get lots more for your coupons. Come on, ring. If you ask me, it'll be sheer folly for anybody to go out there while all this is going on. Sheer folly. That shrapnel's coming down like hail, man. What do you suggest, then, Fraser? We crouch in this funk hole for the rest of the night. I want to get out there and get to grips with the enemy. They're rather high up in the sky for that, sir. <laughs> uh, Captain Manrin, yours is the sort of talk I like to hear. You remind me of a major we had in the trenches in 1916. He wasn't a skulking man either, sir. In fact, he couldn't abide crouching and skulking. He was just like you. Oh, he was a wonderful man. Really? Oh, yes. His name was Major Willoughby Darcy. Anyway, one day we was all crouching in the bottom of the trench, and after we'd been crouching for about an hour, he said to us, Boys, I've had enough of this. I'm going up on that parapet. 
and I'm going to walk about just to show those damn Jerrys that we are not afraid. Well, sir, he climbed on top of the parapet. Yeah, just a minute. I, I know what you're going to say, John. Walked about and didn't get a stretch. No, sir, he got shot. <laughs> he got shot in rather an inconvenient place, sir. He had to do a lot of crouching after that, too. <laughs> Lord, look what the wind blew in. Hello, what are you lot doing in here? Shouldn't you be out looking for parachutists? Just clear off, will you? Yes, mind your own business. Oh, don't you start Napoleon. Hey, why aren't you out ARPing? <laughs> if you must know, I've been out ARPing all night. <laughs> I've done my job, mate. We've had two bombs tonight already, you know. The last one was pretty big, but it only landed in the woods, thank God. Where did the first one land? Oh, that was only a small one. It hit the pumping station. It's all right. There was no one in it. No one in it? Two of my men, Godfrey and Walker, are on duty there. Well, no one told me. What have you got to do, sir? You must get down there straight away. No, hang on a minute, Manrin. You can't go interfering. This is an ARP matter. Mind your own business. Right, man, follow me. Aye, oh, sir. Just a minute. P- Pike, what are you doing down there, crawling about on the floor? Sorry, Mr. Manning, I've dropped all my hundreds and thousands. No, it's an emergency. It's just an emergency. Well, so is this. It's a whole week's ration. Don't be ridiculous. Come on, men, down to the pumping station. Right, left, right, left. Patoon! Halt! Right, men, fall out. Get that door open. Aye, right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Is there anybody there? <laughs> as far as I can see, Captain Manning, the occupants do not seem to be in occupation. <laughs> You'll probably see better if you switch the light on. Oh, right. There you are, Manning. I told you so. There's no one here. If they were here, they must have gone home or popped out for some fags. I can assure you, Hodges, that when my men are on duty, they do not pop out for fags. Especially at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, all right, Wilson. <laughs> Jones? Close the main door behind you. We don't want to show a light. Right, sir. I suppose you're going to tell me your men are here, but they've disguised themselves as pipes and stopcocks. A bit ridiculous. Probably in the room next door. Blimey, they keep you very quiet, aren't they? Talk about the silent service. We wouldn't be able to hear them through these walls. They're solid stone and about two feet thick. Well, I still don't think they're here. I suppose we'd better check. How do we get to the other room? I expect that door over there. Yes, leads into a passage. Good Lord. What's the matter, Captain Manrin? Look at this passage. Part of the ceiling and one of the walls has collapsed. Let's have a look. Blimey, it's completely blocked. Mr. Manrin! Mr. Manrin! Is that you? Sorry, like Walker, sir. Seems to come from the room where we were just in now. Mr. Manrin, can you come back in here? Mr. Walker's looking through the wall. Looking through the wall? Oh, sir, look, up there, near the ceiling. There's a grill in the wall between the two rooms. And Mr. Walker's on the other side. I think we all realised he's not on this side yet, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me, Mr. Mallory? Just a minute, Walker. Wilson, hmm? give me a bunk up. A what, sir? A leg up. I want to look through that grill. Talk to Walker and assess the situation. Oh, I see. All right, uh, well, gather round, men, and, and, and stand by to give uh, Captain Mannering a, a, a bunk up. I'll take his right leg, and I'll take the left one. And I'll wish. <laughs> one, two, three, up, up there we are. Ah, oh, good evening, Walker. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mannering. You all right in there? Yeah, I'm okay, but I can't get out. What happened? Well, I heard this bomb whistling down, and then there was a ruddy great bang, and lumps of stone came crashing down in the passage outside. Yes, that's right. It's pretty well blocked. Well, I guess that's what had happened, but uh, I couldn't open the door of this room to have a look, because it opens outwards. Where's Godfrey? He's in here, asleep on the top bunk. Hear that, Sergeant. Did you hear that? Godfrey, he's asleep. The old fool's asleep on duty. And wartime on active service. Yes, all right, all right, Fraser. No, no, it is not all right. It's an offence punishable by death. <laughs> you the said come on, ring. Godfrey has committed an offence punishable by death. <laughs> you know, you him on death. Be yeah. Right, yeah, you wake up, Mr. Godfrey. <laughs> Look here, Walker. Why are you both in there? Well, I did my two hours, and 
Then when Godfrey didn't come and relieve me, I came down here and I couldn't wake him up. It was then that the bomb went off. I see. Wilson, take Godfrey's name. No, no, hold it. Oh, you, you don't understand, Mr. Mannering. I, I think Godfrey's ill. What makes you think that? Well, I still can't wake him up. I've tried everything. Right, we'd better get you out of here. Let me down, Jones. I haven't, sir. I'd never let you down. <laughs> I've got to the end of the earth for you, Captain Manrin, or even further. Look, just oh, lower me to the floor, will you? I want to get down. Oh, I see. Right, come on, Jock. Bring I... him down then. Right, here we go. Right. Oh, you Right, now listen to me, men. I'm afraid we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and shift all that stuff in the passage. Shouldn't take us all that long, Wilson. No, I suppose not. Wait a minute. You're not doing any shifting. This is an ARP job, every rescue. And as Chief Warden, I'm taking charge. Rubbish. You're doing nothing of the sort. Those are my men trapped in that room, so I'm taking charge, and that's that. Now listen very carefully. So far, only part of the ceiling of the passage has collapsed. Although God knows what's holding the rest up. The slightest noise or movement could bring the whole lot down. On the other hand, we can't afford to waste any more time. Godfrey may be very ill. We've got to get into that other room. Aye, but how are we going to shift that rubble without bringing all the rest down on us, sir? We shall just have to be extremely careful. I suggest we form a chain and pass the rubble back from where it's fallen in the passage into this room. And I'm afraid it's not going to be too pleasant for whoever's out there at the head of the chain. Pleasant? It's going to be damn dangerous. Permission to whisper, sir? Mm. I should like to volunteer to be the head of the daisy chain. Let me do it, sir. Let me lead the daisy chain. No, Jones. I want you to stay in here at this end of the chain. Come on, Hodges. You and I are going up to the front. Oh, well, I... Hang on, I... I don't know. Hi, I thought so. Hodges, you're yellow. You're right there, Jack. You've got to strike down his back a foot wide. Be quiet, both of you. Now look, Hodges. Are you coming up to the front of the chain with me or not? Well, uh, it's just that. Uh, uh, well, all right. I'm not going to give you lot a chance to have anything on me. Right. Come on then. And don't forget. Be very careful. And be very quiet. Yeah, right. Here you are, then. Here's the first piece. I'll pass it back. And remember, the slightest sound could bring the rest of this lot down on us. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes, I... I think... think so, yes. And tell the others not to make any noise. Pass it on. I'll... I'll... Try. <laughs> Here are, Sarge. And Napoleon says... Keep it very quiet. Pass it on. All right. Now, here, here you are, Jonesy. Take this and, and keep it quiet. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. And don't you worry, I won't tell a soul. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. Godfrey, wake up. Captain Manor and the others should be able to get us out soon. Come on, wake up. I wonder if his heart's okay. I'll just unbutton his tunic. There, now let's see. Blimey, I can't hear a thing. His ticker must have stopped. I'd better open his shirt. Hello, hello, what's this? Blimey, a couple of inches of thermogene wool. No wonder I couldn't hear his art. <laughs> well, let's get rid of that for a start now. Uh, oh, that's better. Oh, sound as a bell. Cool, oh, thank God for that. Oh, Joe, there's no need to worry. Mr. Manrin's nearly through to you. Thanks, Jonesy. How's Mr. Godfrey? I can't make it out. He's still sleeping like a baby. Walker? Yes, Mr. Manrin? Can you help by pushing the door outwards from your side? Yeah. Hang on a sec. Okay. Uh, oh. There. Can you get in now? Yes. Yes, thank you, Walker. Oh, yeah. All right, Wilson, Hodges? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, yes. We're fine. You speak for yourself, mate. Hmm? I think I've done myself a permanent mischief. <laughs> How's, Godfrey, How's Godfrey, Walker? I don't know. He looks okay. He just won't wake up. I better have a look. Godfrey, can you hear me? Hmm. His pulse seems all right. How is he, Captain Mannering? Fraser, what are you doing in here? 
I thought I told you and Pike to stay in the other room with Jones. Well, of the silly old duffer, I mean a poor old Godfrey's elf. We want to help, sir. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Manring. Don't forget, I've got my scout badge for first aid. <laughs> Very well. Fraser, you close the door of this room. Very quietly. Oh, yeah. And Wilson, you have a word with Jones through the grill over there. Oh, yeah. Tell him to stay where he mm-hmm. is and close his door. Yes, well, there are two doors in his room. Which one do you mean? The one that leads into the passage we've just cleared, of course. Uh-huh. We closed the main door when we first arrived. Well, of course we did, yes, sir. I forgot. Jonesy? Yes, Mr. Wilson? Mr. Manning says you're to stay where you are and close the door into the passage. Stay where I am and close the door. Yeah. Right over, Mr. Wilson? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, what, what is it, Jonesy? I don't think I can do that. You see, I'm over by the grill talking to you and the door's 20 feet away. I can't reach it. <laughs> Jonesy, when Captain Manning says, stay where you are, he means stay in the room where you are. Now go and close the door. Right there, Mr. Wilson. And do it quietly. Otherwise, you may bring the ceiling down. What did you say, Mr. Wilson? I said... <laughs> All right, never mind. It doesn't matter. It's too late. What on earth was that? I'm afraid Jones didn't close his door quietly enough, sir. Oh, this is a nice mess you've landed us in, Mannering. Shut up. Quite <laughs> try this door. Yes, Mr. Mannering. No, it's, it's no use, Mr. Mannering. It won't open. There must be a ton of bricks behind it out there in the passage. Looks as if we're trapped. I were doomed. Doomed. <laughs> Permission to confess, sir. What is it, Jones? I'm afraid I closed the door a bit too unquietly. Sure. <laughs> now listen carefully, Jones. I want you to go to the telephone box down the road, phone GHQ, tell them what has happened, and they'll get someone to rescue. Right out, Mr. Manrin. GHQ should be able to handle this. Mr. Manrin. Yeah. What is it? I haven't got any pennies. I had some yesterday, but I lent them to Mr. Godfrey, and he spent them. <laughs> Reverse the charges. All right, Mr. Manrin. You just keep calm. Now, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Manrin. Don't panic. <laughs> Mr. Manrin, I think Mr. Godfrey's waking up. Oh, good, good. Let's have a look at him. Oh, hi, everybody. I, I must have dozed off for a minute. <laughs> dozed off? He's been asleep four hours. <laughs> What do you think you're playing at, Godfrey? Well, sir, I have been sleeping too well lately, so when I was at the clinic this morning, they gave me some tablets. They, they must be stronger than I thought. <laughs> How dare you take sleeping pills on active service? Good mind to put you Mr. on a Manorin, charge. Mr. permission to perturb you, sir. <laughs> what is it now, Gerald? I'm afraid I can't get out. Why not? The handle's come off the main door. Oh. <laughs> I knew it. We're doomed! Doomed! Be quiet. <laughs> I think. Mr. Manreen. Don't interrupt, Pike. Mr. Manreen, you don't understand. <coughs> I'm wet. <laughs> no need to state the obvious, boy. No, no I, mean, I mean wet, wet. This pipe behind me. It's leaking all over me. Step aside. Let's have a look. Oh, thank you. Good heavens, you're right. Blimey, that bomb must have cracked it. Perhaps if we wrapped something around the pipe, that might stop the flow. Yes, good idea. Uh, given a few minutes and some assistance, I have let you have my flannel binder. <laughs> Thank you, Godfrey, but only as a last resort. <laughs> pike, take off your battle dress blouse, wrap it around the pipe. Why me? Because you're already wet. Do it at all. Coming out quite fast now, sir. Oh, Struth. If it keeps on coming in like that, we'll all be drowned. What are we going to do if we can't stop it, sir? No such thing as can't, Walker. Come on, Pike. Wrap it around the pipe, boy. I don't think it's going to work, Mr. Manrin. Mr. Manrin! What is it, Joan? I think you ought to know that I can hear running water. Yes, Joan. <laughs> yes, we're aware of it. Just remember, sir, there were a lot of uh, stopcocks in that other room. Perhaps Jones could use one of those to turn the water off. Good thinking, Wilson. Walker! Yes, sir. Climb up to that grill. Tell Jones to try and turn off the water by the stopcocks. Right, sir. Hey, Jonesy. That water you can hear, it's in this room. And we're being flooded out. Blimey, is it deep? Well, it's only about three inches at the moment, but it's coming in pretty fast. Mr. Mannering thinks you can help us. 
Well, I don't know about that. I'm a butcher, not a plumber. <laughs> well, all you've got to do is turn off the stopcock. Well, let's think now. This has got to be the stopcock, yes. I wonder which way you turn it off. Hurry up, Josie. It's getting very wet in here. Which way's off, Joe? Uh, anti-clockwise. Hurry up. All right, Joe. Anti-clockwise, that means that, that way. No, wait a minute, no, it doesn't, no. It means this way, no, that's right, yes. No, it must be this way. How's that? I say, old fool, he's making it worse. Jonesy, you're turning it the wrong way. I'm doing my best, it's very stiff. Come on, then. Look at that pipe up there. The S-bend. It looks as if it's going to get way. The pressure of water must be too great for it, sir. It's going to go, I tell you. It's going to go. We're all going to be drowned. Oh, don't be so hysterical. <laughs> Walk and tell Jones to turn the stopcock the other way. Well, he's been trying to do that, Mr. Mannering, but it's stuck. Oh, my God, that pipe's gone. I told you it would. Well, what have you got to do, sir? It's coming in pretty fast and it's already nearly up to our knees. Well, the first thing to do is try and get ourselves off the ground. We need Tinkerbell. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Manreen, in Peter Pan, when he tries to teach the darling children to fly. Oh. My sister, Sissy, and I went to see Peter Pan at the Adelphi last Christmas. <laughs> Barbara Mullins is playing the part. They're on wires. You yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> if you'll shift over a bit on that top bunk, there should be room for some of us up there as well. Oh, oh yes. All right, Mr. Man. Yeah, right. Uh, how's that? That's more like it. Now, let's see. I think if we squeeze up, we should be able to get four of us up there with Godfrey. That's myself and three others. Blimey, Mannering, you make sure you're all right, don't you? Since I'm going to be called upon to make the decisions, I must be in an elevated position where I can see what's going on. Without getting wet. Without getting wet. No. <laughs> that aspect is purely coincidental. Right, Wilson, Fraser, Walker, you three can climb up there with Godfrey and myself. Right. Oh, thank, thank you very much. much. Just a minute, Napoleon. What about me? There's an old tin bath over there in the corner. You can float about in that. <laughs> Miss Manreen, can I come up on the bank, please? I'm sorry, Pike. There's no more room. You just have to get wet. Anyway, you're soaked through already. That's not fair. Don't argue, boy. Besides, you're the youngest. Compared to all of us, you're still wet behind the ears. If that water keeps on coming in at this rate, he's never likely to get them dry. <laughs> What am I going to do when the water reaches my head? Don't worry. With any luck, we'll have thought of something by then. Mr. Mannery. What is it, Godfrey? Uh, well, I, I don't like to mention it, but I, I've been shut up in this room for rather a long time now. Oh. And with all this water about... If you're, if you're going to say what I think you're going to say, the answer's no. No, no, no. It, it's, not, it's not that. I, I just wanted that someone would rub my ankles for me. You see, I, I'm not very good in damp conditions. I... I start to seize up. Blimey, Chuck, did you hear that? With all this water about, old Godfrey will be as stiff as a board in her now. Oh, well, at least we'll be able to float a boat on him. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, the water's up to my chest now. If you don't let me up on the bank, I shall tell Mum. Very frank, do something, Moaning. You can see there's no room. Well, it's not fair. Mr. Mannering, the water's getting awfully deep. I can see that, Pike. You said you'd think of something before it reached my head. We are thinking. Wilson, have you thought of anything yet? Oh, no, I haven't, sir, but I'm, I, I'm working on it. We're entombed. <laughs> entombed. I mind the time when I was a bit laddie on the wild and lonely Isle of Barra, a submarine sunk in the bay. Seven brave men were trapped in it. The water rose higher and higher. It came up to their waists. It came up to their necks. It came up to their eyeballs. <laughs> a terrible way to die. <laughs> oh, Struth, put a suck in it. Mr. Mary, I wonder if I might... Once and for all, Godfrey, it is impossible for you to be excused. It isn't that. Uh, what I was going to say is... Was that I think I found a way out. What are you talking about? Well, it's like this. My end of the bunk is up against that wall. Yes, you can see that, Godfrey, but uh, what about it? Well, I, I just plumbed up my pillows, and when I moved them, I revealed a sort of manhole cover in the wall. Look, there. Blimey, he's right, Captain Manhole. Oh, hey, that must be an outside wall, sir. If we can get that cover off, we'll be free. It's certainly worth trying. 
Right, Fraser, Walker, you're nearest to it. Right, sir. See if you can undo those bolts. Right, sir, Mr. Mannering. They should never be too difficult to unscrew. They're the butterfly kind. We had them in the Navy on the ship's portholes. She didn't even need a spot up, sir. And when we get out, Mr. Mannering, we'll be able to go round to the front of the building and let Mr. Jones out. That's right, Pike. How's it going, Walker? Oh, oh, on the last one now, sir. That's it, buddy. That's it. You've done it. Right. Now, help ease the cover off. It's coming, sir. It's coming. Here. Yeah. I can feel cold air. That must be a way out. Yeah, I think you're right. You okay, Jock? We're nearly there. Uh, I'm fine. There. Ah. Well done, you two. Drop it. What do you do that for? <laughs> that water went all over me. Oh, don't be silly, Frank. You're already wet through. I oh, know, but I don't like the water going in my eyes. Same when I have my hair washed. My mum always holds a flannel over my eyes, doesn't she, Uncle Arthur? <laughs> yes, sir. It's quite true, she does. How do you know? Well, uh, she happened to mention it one day. Really? Yes, you know, uh, just, just in passing. Mm. As far as Mrs. Pike is concerned, Wilson, I get the impression that you stop a lot more often than you pass. Come on, Come on, Private Walker, have a look outside. It's still very dark, but we can definitely get out this way. Well done, Fraser. Right, man, one at a time. Follow me. Uncle Arthur, what is it, Frank? I bet Mr. Jones will be ever so surprised when he sees we've got out. Oh. Ah, there you are, Wilson. Just wondering where you'd got to. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, sorry. Godfrey had a bit of trouble climbing out, but he's, he's on his way now. Yes, well, we won't wait for him. After four hours locked up in there, he's bound to need a few moments to himself. <laughs> hey, look, Mr. Van Ryn. There's the front door of the pumping station. And the handle's still there. I thought Mr. Jones said it had come off. The handle came off on his side of the door, you stupid boy. Oh. Right, come on, men. Let's go in and surprise Jones. <laughs> Jones! We've come to get you out. Jones! Oh, Mr. Manrin, thank goodness you're alive. I thought you'd all drowned. No, no, we're fine, Jones. We managed to get out through a manhole. Manhole? You found one as well. This place is full of manholes. I found one. If you'd hung about a bit, I could have rescued you. How very kind of you, Jonesy. Well, I don't know about you men, but I've had enough of this place for one night. Huh. Let's get out of here. Just a minute. Who closed this door? <laughs> I did it. It was rather draft of it open. I, I didn't want any of you to catch cold. <laughs> There's no handle on this side. You've locked us all in again. Oh, oh. Oh. Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Benham. I, I, I didn't think. How are we going to get out? There's only one way. One of us has got to climb through this manhole into the other room... Wade across to the other manhole, climb out, and then go round to the outside of this door and let us out. Well, whoever has to do that is going to get very wet. Yes, very wet. Now, normally for a task like this, I would ask for volunteers. But since you've grasped the situation so quickly, you're obviously the man for the job. Hodges. What? <laughs> Come on, get your trousers off. Oh, I hate you, Napoleon. I really hate you. I do. I hate you. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, and Larry Martin as Private Walker. Asleep in the Deep was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias. Thank you.